Hi, I'm Bruce. This is my uh, Rocky Mountain Labs, Bap Baptronics. <clears throat> and uh, today I'm showing you a, uh, a Fluke 1910A uh, multi-counter. Measures frequency, period, totalizes, has a check function, auto ranges, or you can manual range with a resolution down to 100 hertz, 10 hertz, 1 hertz, or a tenth of a hertz. Uh, we've got uh, two-level attenuation via push button, and then we've got a trigger level preset uh, using a little knob over here. We can preset it in to the left and where it clicks, or you can set the level of that you want to trigger off of by rotating the dial. And then finally a reset function. The unit's in very good shape. Uh, no visible marks on the on the faceplate here that I can see. Um, there is a very minor scratch or so, maybe on the bezel, plastic bezel, just where it's banged something, but uh, in essence, everything is in beautiful shape, as you can see. Gave it a good cleaning inside and out, lubricated and cleaned all of the switches. We've calibrated the unit. identification down here that we need to check not really this is all the uh, specifications serial number is on the faceplate uh, 2900011 is you won't be able to see it with the camera but but it's there 2900011 yeah we're going to take the thing through its paces and uh, if you'll bear with me, we'll set up and do that. Okay, well, I figured while I had it open, I wanted to give you a look at this, uh, this Fluke 1910A frequency counter. I've removed the, um, the shielding plate, which goes right in there. I've taken that out. And you can see the majority of the circuitry. We've got some large-scale integration circuits and... Uh, Oh, maybe some proprietary stuff in here, but uh, and then in the back we see our uh, our crystal oscillator, power supply unit. We're gonna put it back together. There's a uh, there's a calibration point in the back that I'll be able to access when I remove the label that's over it, and uh, and then we'll go ahead and calibrate the unit to our rubidium standard. So hang tight. So let's go ahead and, uh, and try some different frequencies. Um, right now, we've got 10. Let's do a 110. Okay, and then this thing is rated at 125. So let's take her up to 120. 130. We're already past its uh, rated level. We're in 140, 150, 160, 170, 180 does not make it. So about 170. We've got a reliable looking uh, signal. All right, let's go back down to um, the 10, drop off the 1. Here we are at 10 million again. There's 9. Oops, sorry. Now we got 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one million, and nine hundred thousand hertz, eight hundred. Seven hundred, 
600, 500, 400, and right about now I need to be switching over to a, uh, a different generator. This generator is good from 300 kilohertz up to about 500 million hertz. All right, we've hooked up the HP 3320, which works very well below uh, 10 megahertz. And we're going to, uh, we're right now at 200 kilohertz. We're going to drop it down to 100. All right, and let's do 90, 80. Let it settle out a second. The generator is going to have, yeah, we got 80. It's going to be off a little bit, but uh, the counter will catch it 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. All right, let's uh, change our scale. <coughs> All right, there's nine kilohertz, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one. All right. Here we are at uh, 0 0.9 kilohertz or 900 hertz. There's 800, 700, 600, 500, 400, 300. 200, 100, here we are at 90 hertz, 80, 70, 60, 50 hertz, 40, 30, 20, 10. Here's 9 hertz, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, here's 1 hertz. Okay. Here. All right, now we're on a 10 second average here. We're at 0.1 hertz um, for the um, time base. So we're taking 10 seconds. We got 0.9 hertz showing. That's what I'm using. Going to 0.8. Unfortunately, it takes 10 seconds to get a reading. What I'll do next is I'll skip down to like 0.5 and we'll see what it does there. But here's 0 0.8. 6. Here's 0.5 coming up. Give it a moment. No, I think we lost it. So, looks like 0.8 hertz was about the lowest we got. Let's go back and 
there's 0 0.8 so we repeated ourselves on that so it looks like uh, we got a range from 0.8 Hertz up to about a hundred and seventy megahertz on this unit uh, whose specs are different let's um, let's do a period check here nine hundred and ninety nine point nine to one somewhere near that's and that's milliseconds so that would be one second which would be what I was looking for let's uh, go to two Hertz which should be 500 milliseconds and as we obviously are three three hundred and thirty three four two hundred and fifty so get the idea the periods working okay well we've got the fluke calibrated and as you can see the 10 megahertz signal coming in is um, running quite well let's take a look uh, we're within 3 Hertz of 10 million so 3 divided by 10 million that give you the error it's pretty small um, pretty good for a unit of this type and uh, so she's been calibrated been calibrated to a uh, rubidium standard or my bench is uh, calibrated to that standard so we know it's accurate and uh, whether she I can't say whether she'll hold this indefinitely or what, but uh, uh, but it should. It's a nice stable oscillator. It should last a good long time. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, just check a couple of things. We we did uh, uh, take a look at frequency. We took a look at period. Uh, the totalizing. Um, let's see. You'll see that we're counting upwards. That's what the total function does. If you were running at a very slow speed, probably be more sensible. And at any point in time, uh, when you've got enough counts, and then you can be done with that. Uh, we have a check function, which uh, you turn the unit on if you want to know whether or not this, the circuitry is functioning properly. They provided a, a check of the counter circuits and of the oscillator. So you push the check and to put ourselves in auto and it'll take a look at its internal 10 megahertz oscillator and it tells you that it's 10 million and then as you step the uh, range switches down uh, you'll see it go through the manual ranges uh, counting again the 10 million and you'll see that you added a decimal now uh, when the rate with the resolution at 10 hertz we go to 1 hertz it'll take a little bit longer the uh, the one is pushed off to the left but we picked up another zero to the right so uh, that's uh, one zero three zeros and three zeros so there's 10 million to the Hertz and we're perfect and if we go to the point one Hertz at this moment well that's because we're counting the interior the internal oscillator so all right so it's, all, it's not going to have any error, or it shouldn't anyway, maybe one count. So here we are. We've gone through all the ranges. So the ranges are good. The internal oscillator is functioning. We're able to count it. That's the check function. So uh, the attenuator would um, uh, attenuate this incoming signal. Let's see, right now we... Uh, We'll attenuate it. Yeah, we, we've attenuated it to the point that it actually is uh, not not responding. There we're, we picked it up again. If I hit the attenuator switch, let's see. All right, I'm halfway on my attenuation. If I hit the switch, dropped it out, lift the switch, it comes back. So we're getting an attenuating effect with the attenuator switch. That's all I wanted to show. Um, and then the reset function zeroes out the count and then you restart the count so there's all of the functions uh, when we sell the unit we're going to include the uh, service manual for the frequency counter and uh, I'll go ahead and throw in a set of beginner test leads coax to um, 
gator clip type end so quite usable uh, in the early stages if you want to connect to equipment directly you're going to need double-ended coax and I'm sure you'll be able to provide that so there you have it it's a fine meter uh, excellent compact size uh, excellent for a bench uh, you've got what you need to start out with uh, so happy bidding thank you for listening